Grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The Donkey by G.K. Chesterton. <clears throat> when fishes flew and forests walked and figs grew upon thorn, some moment when the moon was blood, then surely I was born. With monstrous head and sickening cry, and ears like errant wings, the devil's walking parody on all four-footed things. The tattered outlaw of the earth, of ancient crooked will, starve, scourge, deride me, I am dumb. I keep my secret still. Fools, for I also had my hour, one far fierce hour and sweet. There was a shout about my ears and palms beneath my feet. I thought this might be the best way to introduce myself to you. Yes, I am that donkey who carried Jesus into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. It was my father who many years before had carried a woman named Mary on a journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem. I heard his stories about angels and singing shepherds and Magi with gifts. I didn't believe it. And then many years later, my father met and married my mother, and I am their child. I'm young for donkeys, but it was an amazing experience that I want to share with you. As the poet said, we donkeys can be a little freakish with our big ears and our bothersome brain. We are not prized like stallions or feared like bears. But I hope you'll listen to what I have to tell you because you and I have more in common than you think. Like I, you too have been located, loosed, and led by Jesus. And I want to take just a few minutes to help you understand how wonderful that is. Let me be clear. My comments this morning are not about me, the donkey, but rather about Jesus. Without Jesus, there would be no Palm Sunday, no humble king, for me to carry into Jerusalem, to sit upon a splintery throne of a cross, lest you be eternally lost. So let's talk about Jesus. Did you know what he'd been up to before Palm Sunday? He'd spent some time in Jericho, where he healed a blind man, and then hung out with a tax collector named Zacchaeus. From there, he walked to Bethany, where he enjoyed a meal with his friends, Mary and Martha, some of whom are back in the kitchen right now, participating as the Martha Circle and preparing our meal for today. Also present was their brother, Lazarus. And yes, that's the same Lazarus that Jesus had brought back from the dead. Jesus then started out for Jerusalem. But before he had gone far, he sent two of his disciples ahead to fetch him a donkey. Now that must have struck the disciples as strange. Because for three years, in fact for all his life, anytime Jesus wanted to go anywhere, unless he was in a boat, he walked. And sometimes he walked even on the water. But this time, even though it was only a couple of kilometers, he sent disciples ahead to get a donkey on which no one had ever ridden. 
And so it was that he fulfilled the writing of the prophet Zechariah, who wrote, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, daughter of Jerusalem! See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. You see, long before I was born, God knew me. More than that, he had a plan for me. For you see, you and I are not that different. Before you were born, God knew you. And the Apostle Paul, when he wrote to the Christians in Ephesus, said, For God chose us in Christ, before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his children through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and his will. If you have ever felt that no one cares about you, if you've ever wondered what your purpose is on earth or why you are here at all, if you have ever thought and felt yourself totally alone, without a friend, then you know how I feel. For I'm a jackass. And many people have called me that over the years. I'm not considered the smartest of animals. I'm just known for hard work and being able to move heavy objects. But even my fellow donkeys didn't think much of me because I was still a kid. Not the goat kid, the donkey kid. I had never yet had a rider on my back. Now you, young lady, you take care of horses. And those are magnificent animals, beautiful and gorgeous. But tell me, my equestrian horse whisperer, <laughs> how many donkeys have you cared for? None yet. None yet. See what I mean? Everybody wants the stallion. <laughs> Everybody wants the beautiful mare. Nobody wants the donkey. <laughs> and so we're just sort of there, left to do the hard work that the horses can't do. <laughs> but when Jesus sent two of his disciples to fetch me, he gave them detailed instructions about what they should do and about what they should say if anyone questioned them. They were to reply simply, the Lord needs this and will send it back shortly. And guess what? That's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. I was just standing there minding my own business, munching some hay. <laughs> and these two fellows came up and untied me and started to lead me away. And the neighbor said, hey, what are you doing with that donkey? And they said, the Lord needs it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and they brought me to Jesus, threw coats on my back, and let Jesus climb aboard. And so it was that we traveled down the main road and up the hill into Jerusalem. I had been located by the hitching post outside my master's house. You've been located too. John, in one of his writings, says, quoting Jesus, anyone who commits sin is a slave to sin, but rather become a slave to God. Now, I've seen how people act when Satan is their master and sin dominates their life. They don't care about one another. They don't show true love to one another. They need to be set free. They need to be released. Now you notice that I was not released to go and gallop off on my own. I was given a task to perform. And so it is for you. You have been forgiven of the sins you have committed. 
even if you haven't brought the beans and rice to go with the enchiladas. <laughs> Little inside joke there. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, forgiveness does not bring license. In other words, you can't say, well, I've been forgiven, so I can go out and sin more. It doesn't work that way. You can't play games with God's forgiveness. God forgives you, but he desires a changed heart. He wants to be able to lead you where he wants you to go. Now, I admit, I felt the weight of Jesus when I had him on my back. And it's similar for you, too. When you put Jesus on as your Lord and Savior, it's not a heavy burden. It's like putting on a winter coat in a bitterly frigid Southern California winter morning where the temperature has dropped below 50 degrees. <laughs> Can you imagine such a thing? Hmm. When you put the coat on, you don't think to yourself, oh, how heavy this coat is. No. You think how warm I am inside this coat against the gale force winds of a Southern California winter storm. <laughs> Jesus said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, when Jesus got on my back, he could have used me to get away from the crowds. He could have gone back down the hill, headed back up to Galilee. He could have avoided all that was lying in front of him, but he didn't. And I'm proud to say that I'm the one who carried him into Jerusalem. Granted, the people didn't understand they thought he was coming to overthrow the Romans, and so they cheered and shouted and called out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It's only now that we understand why Jesus was there. Yes, it was to be our king, but not our king on earth, but rather the king in our hearts. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah.